to all of them who are joining us. Uh, together, the POP and TSS sections of Laconi are pleased to introduce to you two esteemed professionals in the field of library and information science. Dr. Michael Stevens is a professor in the School of Information at San Jose State University. His teaching focuses on information communities, evolving library science, and reflective practice for librarians. ALA Editions has published two collections of his writings, The Heart of Librarianship in 2016 and Wholehearted Librarianship in 2019. Joining Dr. Stevens is Stacy Ledin, the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Anything Libraries, and also one of the creators and former chair of the Planning Committee for Outside the Lines Libraries Reintroduced. As one of Library Journal's movers and shakers of 2013, Ledin has led a transformative mission in library innovation and creativity to meet the evolving needs of communities. Together, Stevens and Ledin will be sharing their insights and expertise on finding ways to instill joy in folks as they return to our libraries and cultural institutions. Today, you will learn about creating joyful adventures focused on learning, experience, and story. Please join me in welcoming our speakers. Yay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. This is uh, absolutely wonderful to be with you all. I see folks coming in from libraries that I have spent time at when I was in uh, Illinois. Um, uh, this is wonderful to be with you. Um, and uh, thank you all. Um, so excited to be here with my colleague, Michael Stevens. Um, I'm Stacey Ledden, Director of Strategic Partnerships at Anythink. Um, I, in my role, I am responsible for um, overseeing the innovations department. So um, the department that does all the marketing, PR, web, social media, public art, special events at Anythink, and then also run the day-to-day -day of the Anythink Foundation. Um, and we're so excited to be here with you today. This is going to yes. be a very fun, fast-paced morning together. Um, and I just wanted to frame a little bit of what we have in store. So um, this is gonna be an interactive session. Um, we're gonna start with an icebreaker. We have a question for you all, and we're going to be examining the idea of joy and how we can bring joyous experiences to our communities. And so we're gonna start with a little icebreaker. You're going to hear from Michael and I um, um, some examples of this in practice. And then we have um, an interactive portion where we're gonna be working together, collaborating in a Google Doc, adding ideas um, for how we might bring um, different joyous experiences to our local communities. Um, and then at the end, we are, we'll have time for Q&A. So um, we encourage you to wait, um, hold on to your questions. Um, until then, of course, our buddy Simon's gonna be keeping an eye on things in case anything pops up, but we're gonna be answering those questions at the end. Um, so to kick things off though, um, Oh, here I have these. Oh yeah, here we go. Um, we're gonna share a little bit about what has brought us joy um, over the past several years. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, one of the things for me, um, I'm a massive music fan <laughs> and I go see a lot of live music and, um, you know, I have started really collecting um, uh, vinyl all the past like five years and this is the Flaming Lips box set that just came in this weekend and then I'm totally obsessed with <laughs> uh, but providing creating those moments what you know it's so funny I had somebody ask me the other day like we had an icebreaker at work that was like what's your favorite rainy day activity and I was like oh spinning records and then I was like wait I actually like it on Sunday days I like it on the <laughs> evenings I like it in the morning um so music's mine for sure um Michael Okay, so the, I decided to go with these two fellows who are actually, uh, one of them is with me here in the room. Um, these are, uh, this is Billy and Sam. They are rescue dogs that we uh, got uh, last June. Uh, and it has just been 
wonderful. They're brothers. They're brothers. It's just been wonderful uh, getting to know them and being out running in the woods and being in the 15 degree weather because they need to run in the woods. It, it has brought me uh, a lot of joy. Oh, and look at this. <laughs> yes, and this, and I, and I want to throw, throw this out there. This brought me a lot of joy too. And this was almost, uh, it's a little over a year ago. Stacy and I did this program at PLA in Portland, Oregon. And we had no idea what it was going to be like. They put us in the big room and we're like, why are we in the big room? And suddenly <laughs> the room filled up. It was incredible. And we discovered when we turned everybody loose to do their discussion that the, the noise had just rose up in this huge space was just so encouraging and beautiful. And you could tell that people so wanted to be talking to each other. And that I still think about that. And uh, wow, it was like we were back. It was so cool. Yeah, it was such a great experience. It's such an honor to um, present with my colleague, Michael. <laughs> um, and so we want to pose a question to you all to get things started, breaking the ice here. What is one thing that brings you joy, especially when the fe world feels like it's upside down? And if you could just go ahead and drop your answers in the chat um, and share with us, um, what are some of those things that bring you joy? And uh, just to say to everyone with us to say, I, I see we have about almost 100 people. This is uh, a very safe place. Please share as much as you would like. Um, however you want to do it is totally fine. So as much as you want to share is totally fine. And do we have chat enabled um, for the participants? I guess that was a question. Oh, <laughs> I don't know yeah. if <laughs> Now we do. Oh, yeah. woo. Awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so again, oh. what is one thing that brings you joy when oh. it feels like oh. the world is upside? Oh, here we go. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. Yes. <laughs> Puppies, children, gardening, hiking, Walks forest bathing. I love forest bathing. K-pop. <laughs> Yay. Walking in the woods, absolutely. Oh, spending time oh. with the nieces. <laughs> Amazing meals with people I love. There's something about coming together around a table. It's so beautiful. Audio books. Hallmark movies. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> love it. Board games with friends. Oh, oh flowers blooming. We're so excited for spring. Oh, love oh, it. Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> walking under the sun a lot of uh -huh. a lot of those yeah. nature moments which um yes feel the same way yeah <laughs> wonderful <laughs> thank you so much for sharing cool. that oops there we go okay so uh, we're going to talk a bit about joy, and I actually have another question. And joy can come, uh, as just as we've seen in the chat, in many different ways. Uh, this is a, a particularly joyful thing for Billy and Sam. So how would you, and we'll put this back uh, to the folks that are with us, how would you define the concept of joy? Please feel free to put it uh, into uh, the chat. Oh, I love that. Anything yeah. that makes me smile. Just reading that made me smile. That's good. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a feeling of freedom. I love that. I would I agree with that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Lightness. Peace with self. Contentment in the moment. Anything that helps me forget about the stresses of life. And oh, there are so many. <laughs> but we get to come together in beautiful moments like this, which we're very excited for. Uh, feeling good oh. about yourself and having peace. I've seen peace go by a few times. That's, that is that very important feeling. Yeah. Yeah. 
a lot of happiness too, concentrating mm -hmm. on happiness, happiness in any circumstance. I think that that that's a really tough one, but kind of goes to that like idea, that concept of choose your attitude and how we how we respond mm -hmm. to things, right? Calm, low vibrations. Nice. Love that. I like this one that says uh, accomplishment, victory, and mm. achievement. There, there is something that when you get something done, that's like, yes. yeah. Oh, moments when your heart's heart feels full. Mine feels full right now. <laughs> Happiness that cannot be contained. You feel compelled to try to share it, bursting at the seams. I love that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We'll continue to kind of we'll yeah. we'll have these questions throughout. So be be thinking of those of how you define that. Cool. So we are hurtling toward actually uh, talking with you all and getting you interacting about creating uh, joyful uh, experiences of all kinds. But we want to frame it a bit uh, by by talking about the library as a space for playful learning and creativity. And this is one of the things, like if uh, I'm showing my age, like all the time that I've been teaching, uh, and even before that, uh, it, when I worked in the public library, we were moving toward this idea of the library being more than, of course, the warehouse of books, which we always say, but being, being much more than a place you go, you get something, transaction, and you go. Uh, and uh, Stacey, if you don't mind, please advance the slide. And, and I may have this still on my clipboard. I do. Uh, there's a citation for you all. Uh, this is just a wonderful article. There's so many amazing uh, things going on in libraries, but I want to highlight what's going on at Memphis. Smithsonian covered them. They're doing a lot of things around uh, creation, music creation, uh, a space for people to express themselves musically. Stacy, please go to the next slide, as well as artistically. And I just was so thrilled. And this is an actual reading that I, I use in one of my classes called the Hyperlink Library uh, that shows how many ways we might encourage people's uh, learning as well as expression of creativity. And then Stacy, please go to the next one. And we're also <laughs> making room for folks to come together for various different reasons. And I gotta tell you, I would be really drawn to the socially anxious hangout group at Cedar Rapids Public Library, which I got to spend a wonderful day with them right before the pandemic. I think I'm out of the age group that they are, are looking for, but they're also providing snacks. But how wonderful <laughs> if you're feeling a little socially anxious, uh, as uh, many of us do, to get to come together and, and just chat with people, play a game, or whatever. And Stacy, please go to the next slide. And really what I think a lot of this is swirling around, and here's a lovely photo of uh, the Story House in the UK, which uh, became a library after being in a theater. And now it is a theater, it is a library, it is a performance space, it's many different things. Uh, but it, it really taps into Every, I think everything we've seen is that feeling of belonging to something, belonging to a group, belonging to the institution that is the library, belonging or feeling that you are welcome and encouraged to be there and you have a voice. And I think that's uh, something really um, wonderful to think about. And Stacey, I will turn it over to you because I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Thanks, Michael. Um, so I am going to share a little bit about our work at Anythink um, and some of the ways that we provide those moments of joy. You know, some of the projects that I'm working that I'm going to be sharing today are big, big projects that we are focused on right now. Um, but I just wanted to highlight too that joy also comes in small packages. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's just getting a smile from somebody at a time where you need it. And so um, while I'm going to be sharing some large projects, um, just because I we've got some exciting things going on and and the ways that we think about those moments of joy, um, I just wanted to reiterate, too, that, that that again, some of those those smaller moments are all equally important. Um, so. 
AnyThink is the public library system for Adams County, Colorado, um, which is just north of Denver. We serve um, a population of about half a million people um, with seven branches and a bookmobile. And um, I've been with AnyThink for, it'll be 15 years in October. So started um, as part of the communications team um, before, as we were really developing the concept of AnyThink. Um, and we describe ourselves as an experience library. So everything that we do at AnyThink is really about the customer experience and putting customers at the center. So this really influences the way that our spaces are designed. So they are these warm, welcoming um, destinations uh, to uh, this is our mascot dude, the squirrel, <laughs> um, named after our doodle, which is our logo. Uh, but we train our staff on hospitality. That's something that's really important to us is, is um, have is the staff um, being equipped to create that that really welcoming, memorable experience for people when they come in, come to the library. Um, to the kinds of programs that we offer. So that experience model really influences like our emphasis on hands-on participatory programs. We believe that everyone learns through play um, and everybody learns differently. And that doesn't stop when you become an adult. Um, so uh, we really try to make our programs as participatory as possible. Um, and so, you know, when the pandemic hit, like many organizations, like many, I'm sure of your organizations, you know, we were really thinking about how can we continue to meet community needs um, during a time when the libraries were closed. And so I had um, the opportunity to participate on a task force in Adams County that was focused on identifying needs of aging adults. And uh, we had 40 different individuals. It was such a great example of collective impact. Um, 40 individuals from across the county, um, from different organizations and uh, really think identifying what are the needs for our aging adults um, and how can we collectively meet them. And of course, one of the big things that we identified was isolation. Um, and so we were always kind of thinking about as a library, what's our slice of the pie? And the biggest, you know, one that we, we realized and like what assets do we have to help support this? Um, one of the things that we realized is that we have a list of, of library customers. We had um, ways to contact people. And so we ended up, our staff ended up contacting, calling um, almost 8,000 library cardholders in our community um, that were 60 and older. And they were calling just to check in and say, hi, this is your local library. Um, can I help you with anything? Sometimes people were connected with critical resources in the community. Um, other times people just wanted to talk. They just wanted to hear a friendly voice. Um, and so uh, this was one of the ways that we were able to meet some of those basic needs um, in our community, um, especially that summer 2020 during that time period. Um, we also saw that there was a need to get fresh produce to people, to individuals in our community, especially our aging adults. Um, we partner with the American Heart Association, um, the city of Thornton, and our um, local um, health department to put on farmer's markets in the summers at two of our locations. And um, in 2020, summer of 2020, we decided to continue those, um, especially because people were really having a hard time getting fresh produce, especially those who were older and didn't feel comfortable going to the grocery store. Um, and so through this partnership um, and this initiative, we were actually, and through some grant funding that we received, we were able to give out $50,000 worth of fresh produce to people in our community. Um, and we, we heard from a lot of people saying, you know, we, um, you know, this is, this, <laughs> this is the only fresh food I've had in a month. Um, so it really did when thinking about those basic needs that we were looking to meet, um, help to fulfill that. And then we really thought about what are those basic library um, 
services that those baseline services that we want to ensure that we can fulfill um, even with the libraries closed. And so, of course, print and mail was something that was really critical um, and, and welcomed. Um, so for those important documents that people had, they could actually email us the document. We would print it, mail it to their homes. Um, you know, weekly live story times, like many libraries, really the kids in our community, they needed to see a familiar face during a time when um, things were super intense, right? And things were a little scary, a lot scary. Um, so being able to see that familiar face, this is Miss Julie here, um, and provide a little bit of continuity and familiarity was really important. Um, and then we created the Anything Connect line. And this was an inbound line. Um, so um, similar to the calls that we were making, the outbound calls that we were making to seniors in our community, um, we created a line where people could call in for anything. They could call in just to have a conversation. They could call in um, to just ask about book recommendations um, or connect with community resources. And so once those basic needs were established, we really started thinking about what are these opportunities also that we can provide sparks of joy? And this has always been something that's been really key to us at anything, but really started to crystallize during, um, during this time. And, and I started kind of thinking of, of it in this term as joy, as essential, as an essential service. And, um, you know, and this meant for us connecting people with art, helping them nurture through art, um, thinking about different ways that we may create connections and, and opportunities for people to gather, um, and then the connections with nature. Um, and so the, the projects that I'm going to share with you now are really from the past year, um, but this was very um influential with for us in thinking about just these past few years and how we think about our services for our community and, and this as a need. And so nurturing through art, um, one of the things that I'm personally super passionate about um, and so lucky that um, this gets to be part of my job um, is making art accessible for all art and artists like it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be something that's hit it that's in a museum and just stays there like how can people be part of the process how can they envision themselves as artists again how can we how can we nurture and heal together as individually um, individually or as a community through art um, and so last summer we hosted um, an, um, Helen Hebert. She is a paper artist um, and she did a residency with us for a week where she built this large scale paper lantern. It was such a cool process to watch. And so people could stop by anytime and interact with the artist. Um, we've had community members and staff members help build the piece. It was, there are 70, I think 70 or 80 really thin bamboo rods and then this very delicate paper it's it's a really painstaking process but such a beautiful process to create this lantern that was very much inspired by um really this idea of of nurturing and um i want to oh, so the on the lantern it says you may think your light is small but it can make a huge difference in other people's lives. Um, and so this was, you know, another opportunity for us to really create, again, a spark of joy, that uh, moment to, of reflection. So the idea is that you would step, you step under this and have that moment to really think about um, how you are the light <laughs> in our community. Um, and so it was a really powerful installation. Um, and Helen actually spent a week um, towards the end of the summer hosting workshops where, across the district where people could create their own lanterns. And then this actually came together in a culminating event that we hosted at our Anything Right Farms branch called Illuminate the Night. And so this was like the summation really of this summer of nurturing and healing through art and wishes. Um, and um, we had an event. This was total experiment for us. It was from 8 to 10 p.m. at the library on a Saturday. 
Um, we serve a lot of young families. So we weren't really sure if they were going to be down to come out um, that late on a Saturday night, but we had over 200 people there. They were encouraged to bring their lanterns that they had created as part of the workshop. Um, and um, we had spoken word poetry. This is our amazing, one of our concierges, Paris, from our Anything Bennett branch. We had music, we had moon yoga, sky gazing, stargazing. Um, we had a hawk quest out with owls. Um, and it led up to, at the end of the evening, um, everybody brought their lanterns together and we actually um, did a procession, a parade around the library and then inside the library to the lantern, everybody together led by our musicians singing Stand By Me. It was a very emotional, we're a bunch of saps. <laughs> it was a very emotional healing, community healing um, experience. Um, and uh, one that I, one of my favorites um, that we've ever done. So, um, you know, using art as this opportunity for nurturing is one of the ways that we um, help provide those moments of joy. So part of what we've also been doing is really reimagining community connections and thinking about new ways that the, in, that the library can be a catalyst for people coming together. Um, and this was very much inspired by a lot of the things that we saw during the pandemic as well. And so Anything is embarking on a new project. Um, actually, I've been working on this for two years now, so uh, but we haven't launched it yet. Um, but we are building an Anything world in the metaverse. Um, this is meant to be a space where people can gather. We will host events. Um, there are collaborative spaces, gaming spaces, um, and um, we we are very excited about this and really representing where meeting people where they are. Um, and so we know that um, people, you know, 83% of people who are using the internet worldwide are using it for some form of gaming. And so this is in response to that and also just really making our the experiences the way we offer it anything accessible to more people. That was something else that we saw is like people with mobility issues were able to engage with the library in a different way for the first time um, because we were streaming our backyard concert series and and providing different ways to engage with our services. Um, and, you know, we what we're trying to do also is um, really break out of the Zoom box and and create um, a very dynamic way for people to connect. Um, so our vision statement for this project um, is that Anything World is a groundbreaking expansion of Anything into the metaverse that will connect people with ideas and each other in a revolutionary way. The Anything World provides a new opportunity for the library to meet people where they are, offering a space to gather, connect, and collaborate. By launching the first library world of its kind in the metaverse, Anything is once again leading the charge as a catalyst for innovation in our community and worldwide. Um, so this is a really exciting project. Our hope is that it will have public launch in October. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's scary and delightful and fulfilling and exciting all at the same time. Um, so more to come on that project. Um, but again, that's another way that we're really trying to facilitate community connection in a totally different way. And thus, you know, again, creating those moments of joy. And then finally, I wanted to share about um, another project I'm super excited that we're working on um, that's all about finding your place in nature. And that's one of the things that we saw, um, you know, at that beginning of like, what are those things, those moments that bring us joy? And there was a lot of that standing in the sunshine, the flowers blooming um, and being outside. Um, so we are currently building two new libraries. We're working on designing two new libraries, one of which is an Anything Nature Library. This um, project is in collaboration with the city of Thornton. They have a 140 acre property in um, North Thornton that is dedicated to open lands. So it will have trail systems through it um, for passive engagement. Um, and they are leasing 15 acres of that to anything for us to build a nature library. 
all of the collections, the experiences, the programming will all be geared towards helping people find their place in nature. Uh, we are in a very suburban community. Surrounding this 140 acres is just housing developments, but it's just this really beautiful spot um, that we, we just see how important it is to help facilitate that connection and that kind of learning. And what's inspiring us, um, and I'm so excited about this, is um, this environmental kinship model. And that we're actually using this model to define the spaces in this library too. So we're moving away from the traditional way that we have um, organized our libraries by children, teens, adult, um, and we're actually focusing on these different areas. So um, there are four of them. One is learning about nature. So this is a space for inquiry and study. This is where you do those experiments and maybe create the nature art. Um, in nature. So like, what are all those things that you need that we need to, um, to go out and get your hands dirty and go on that hike or make those mud pies. So um, there's going to be a space for for that um, engagement. Um, learning with nature, it's really that that um, spiritual connection almost that that deep connection that relationship that you create with nature um whether that's through poetry whether that's through art or or just you know the act of the ritual of of watering your plants every day um and then finally learning for nature so this idea of I, I think of this one is how we support advocacy how um you know sustainability re responsibility um um, but really thinking about um, how we become advocates for our nature. Um, and so the building's actually going to be designed by like around these concepts. Um, and this is an I this is just a shot of the the land. You can see it's it's a bit very prairie like the horizon, the sky, the grasses, um, you know, it's really this little oasis. Um, in a very suburban, very developed area, but you can see 360 degree views. You can hear the birds, you can hear the wind in the grasses. And we're really hoping to, um, all of those will help influence the design, the experiences that we offer um, at that library. So why is joy important? I know this kind of seems like a silly question, but you know, the world can be very hard. And, and we know this, right? And our work can be really hard. Um, but these, these moments of joy are important because um, we don't really know what people are experiencing in their lives, you know? Before they come to us and after they leave, um, you know, we're, we don't know what's going on. And so if we can be that spark, if we can provide that smile, if we can provide that creative inspiration, that's one way that we can help continue to care for and nurture and support our community. And so um, that's that's why we really kind of think of this as an essential service and, and how we can support, support that in people's lives. All right, so I've been, I, that was a lot that hey. I covered. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're we're going to be engaging all of you, which is going to be super great. Cool. Okay. So, uh, Stacey, please go to the the next one. I'm going to say just uh, a few things about what we will do. So, we are going to focus on three different areas, uh, and uh, we'll do them one at a time. We've got some neat ways to do this. So, again, Stacey, just go to the next, please. So, the first one is um, learning. Oops. Oh, hello. Uh, so learning happen. of course, learning happens at the library, but it can happen in so many different ways, from formal classes, from programming. Uh, I am just knocked out by what I see in the space of culinary literacy and nutrition and library gardens and all of those wonderful things happening. Uh, life skill type classes, just anything and everything. Uh, all the different ways that we might provide learning opportunities, formal, informal, curiosity, everything in between. So uh, we'll, we're gonna ask you in just a bit to think about how you might create joyful experiences uh, through the lens of learning. 
The next one uh, is experience. And that could be anything that inspires someone. It might be exposure to art or music or drama or reading poetry for the noon hour as uh, I think it's doc one in uh, Denmark does uh, for uh, adult time uh, to maybe just listen to some poetry and sit and reflect. Um, it might be immersive, it might be new technology, it might be putting on the, the, the uh, virtual uh, glasses and being somewhere else, uh, but any type of experience uh, we might provide. And this is, uh, I love this photo. This is from uh, St. Joe County Public Library where I spent 15 years. And this was part of their uh, pride in South Bend a few years ago. And the last one we will focus on, and this is probably my favorite, is the power of story and all the different forms that stories take. Um, I think we can learn a lot from each other by listening to someone's story. How can we capture stories? How can we, uh, and to quote my friend Eric uh, from the Netherlands, uh, libraries uh, do this and they do it well. We uh, keep stories, we share stories, and now we are making stories. So shout out to Eric for that. But making stories might be gathering uh, the, the stories of the community members and, and saving them. Uh, and it might be, and this is my local library, the Traverse Area District Library in Traverse City, it might be the Queer Tales Book Club, which has been thriving online on Zoom. And they're reading, and I know, uh, Donna, I agree with you, it is a fabulous book. I bought a copy, it's on my shelf behind me. Uh, and uh, absolutely, this is where it, it gets a little serious as well. We have a responsibility to share stories. And if we are doing that, any story that is uh, uh, banned or removed or all of those things, uh, we should do everything in our power to make sure those stories are heard. Also, uh, convening a human library event where somebody might get to talk to someone about their story, uh, that could lead to all sorts of joyful experiences as well as learning experiences. So what we will do, and please go forward, uh, uh, we're going to ask you, uh, we're gonna go through three, each of those again, but I will ask you, we will ask you, uh, as you think about this, and maybe you're with folks, or maybe you're in front of your computer by yourself, and everybody's welcome to share as much as they would like, to please, and this is something I talk about a lot, please use your heart. Bring, uh, bring your heart with you for this exercise, and think about what might enable uh, those joyful experiences. Next slide, please. And I probably will say this wrong, I apologize. Huga, I hope I said it right. Uh, this is the concept. I love the fact that Stacy's libraries have used this uh, in designing their spaces. This goes back to Denmark as well, which is one of the, the centers of library innovation right now in the world. That feeling of comfort, that feeling of coziness, that feeling of a beautiful candle burning on a cold, cold Michigan night, <laughs> as, as I often do here. Um, but it is also, also that feeling of belonging. Uh, and, oh yeah, no worries. And please, please remember this as you are thinking about services you might provide, experiences you might create, stories you might capture and tell, that I really believe that kindness always wins. So we will turn it around to you all and uh, we will ask you what types of services or programs might bring joy to your community. And we're, we are actually going yeah. to be gathering these. Yes. I'm gonna just get out of yeah. this yeah, mode we're, here real quick. We are um, going to- In a it, Google Doc. Go we're gonna yeah, try yeah. something new. That's not it. Let's see here. And I'm gonna drop this chat. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to drop this link in the chat. And the idea is that we are going to, of course, I didn't have this ready to go, but we will. Um, we're going to encourage you to join us in the doc as we go through these sections. 
And what we would like to do is we're going to collaborate together. So you can see here our Finding Joy interactive exercise, um, what types of <laughs> services or programs might bring you joy to your community. Um, and um, I'm gonna have Michael take it from here. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, wow, there, there are folks in, they are typing already. So let's start with learning. Okay, let's start with learning and uh, what what type of programming or service related to learning might, might have you been inspired by something that Stacy shared or that that you saw in the slides? What might you add or brainstorm here around learning for a program to inspire joy? I, I love all these anonymous animals are typing. This is amazing. <laughs> That's really fun. <laughs> and we really wanted to capture these ideas. So yeah, thank you yeah, for we coming do. along yeah. with our experiment yeah. here. <laughs> I see a hand raised in the attendees tab up there. I don't know if that's if somebody's having a technical question, but I or I see a one of these. <laughs> yeah, Michael, I uh I address that attendee okay so okay cool thank, thank you simon for, i appreciate yeah. that yeah sure our projects and live music from high schoolers might be a fun thing music programs they make people happy hello agreed <laughs> okay oh Okay, and I love one this. Of the, oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Michael. No, no, no. Sorry, and I, I just wanted to say, this is this is available to you all. So you can grab this URL. You will have these examples to go back to your folks at your library, and maybe you'll find inspiration here. Stacy, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I love the, this robots and science to show it isn't scary. Like one of the things we were we're working with a museum. Um an architect who does museum quality like ex exhibits and stuff and one of the things that she talked about was um making parents or helping parents feel smart and, oh, and what kinds of things you can do to help parents feel smart because that's what will then make them feel like they want to stay longer with their kids and so that that exposure to robots and science and new technologies in a way that helps them feel smart is something that we've been talking about a lot Neat. I would attend coffee versus tea tasting, and I don't know anything about coffee. I'm a tea drinker. <laughs> it would be right there. Painting for adults over 70. <laughs> then in the chat here from Jay, live music performance with lecture. So book discussions, film and film oh. discussions, hands-on programs lend themselves to new connections among participants via social opportunity and common interest. I totally like that interest-based yeah. learning and mm -hmm. those that the ways that we can bring people together around interests, I think is something yeah. that libraries do really well and it's also really fun. <laughs> I teach a class, uh, the, one of our intro classes where uh, students look at various information communities and a lot of them choose fan groups fans and serious leisure pursuits and there's so much interesting programming that can happen around that and i'm a film person so i'd be all in for film and film discussion Ooh, violin lessons i want to go <laughs> <laughs> we've started checking out some um all kinds that we call them triads but non-traditional items at the library including lots of instruments and um i haven't quite mastered the theremin yet but that's my favorite that i've checked out so far <laughs> oh that's cool so cool first aid for get good samaritans love that oh. geek fest yes An all ages yes, celebration of all the fandoms yeah. i'm in <laughs> Play with pet or pet kittens or puppies during finals week. Oh my God. Mm. I believe in puppy therapy for sure. And kitten therapy. Viola, close your ears. <laughs> my cat's around here somewhere. <laughs> Found 
fabulous. Um, loving all of these learning, uh, joyful moments through learning with the lens of learning. How to archive data in preparation for the zombie apocalypse. Somebody asked, what is mini art? Um, and uh, oh. I can explain it, I guess, from my perspective, but it's creating miniature pieces of art, I believe, um, unless somebody wanted to, that person would like to expand on that in the chat. Um, I know one of the things that we have at Anything is actually an artomat. Um, which is an art dispenser. There's a gentleman out of the Carolinas who refurbishes old cigarette machines into art dispensers. And so oh, for $5, cool. you can have like your own little piece of art. It's pretty rad. Um, we also did a mini art um, experience at PLA as part of our Lovey Town pop-up in Philadelphia a few years ago. Remember that. um should we move uh, on yes to, yeah i was just going to ask you the same thing <laughs> well we'll move down and this one is focused on experience and experience and learning of course goes hand in hand but see what you think here throw some things in that might be related to providing an experience at the library that would instill joy neat I love seeing all of these happening at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's bringing me joy. <laughs> oh, 24 hour film songwriting festival. Neat. How to buy your first home. That's like a serious, that's a, that's a, a life skill thing that would be so useful. We don't teach people how to do that. Yeah, really. Sound healing. I'm, oh, that's, mm -hmm. I, we could all use more of that in our lives. <laughs> yes. Kids in charge for a day. I love it. Let the kids take over the library. Bioluminescent Wonderland. <laughs> I love it. I'm in. One of the things too, when we like, if I do exercises like this with my staff, like one of the things I always try to think about too is like we blue sky it. It's like not thinking about budget, not thinking about you know what put what the restrict. Don't put any restrictions. Just free form right. kind of like ideas, and then you kind of take it from there and then edit to something that's manageable but there's always a nugget in there you know even if you're shooting for the moon absolutely oh family outdoor group picnics oh fun um tlc nielsen gotta go but we're considering a zine festival for our school library love it love yeah, it love so it cool. hope you have a great day <laughs> So yeah, what other kind of joyous experiences, those sparks of joy focused on experience could we provide? Sticker Palooza. Fun. Oh man, I, I'm like really, I'm a total, well, I'm a very uh, fish nerd, <laughs> band fish. Yay. And uh, I collect a lot of stickers. And so like sticker swaps, something i'm kind of into so like that sticker palooza that's I love cool. it. <laughs> marla says that we did a mini craft -a palooza event that cleaned out our storage rooms at the same time oh my god i love it we gave them a specific number of items based on their age and then asked them to bring their creation back for display it was amazing to see what people could create with random supplies <laughs> and plenty of imagination i love it and like, really such a great way of like thinking about sustainability and how do we use all the things um it's great 
bubble day bubble soap outside oh, we have had beautiful. we've had a couple of those and boy do the kids go wild program <laughs> really fun with the chef and food oh yeah i was thinking yes. i was uh, up way up in the upper peninsula of michigan we happened across a community center adjacent to a library that had an outdoor oven and it was pizza night and they were Ooh, making yeah. pizzas right outside it was a beautiful summer night it was amazing so fun community dinner learning magic from professional performers oh Ooh, like the, behind the curtain <laughs> yeah i'm scrolling up so we could just see a few of these up here too just want to make sure we get everything here um love it lego play day yes so many great ideas the forest bathing walks mm. really that that connection with nature i think mm -hmm. cannot be underestimated what what how that i mean we've we've been talking a lot about focus on well-being and and how we support the well-being of our community um and that that nature connection is something that's really powerful learning to code using raspberry pi computers yay kindness club i love that that's great <laughs> something that we did a long a while this was a long time ago now it's almost been 10 years i think is created this installation called camp happiness and we hosted it in indianapolis um at pla oh, um that. and one of the things that we had was like a pay it forward jar and you just we just had like 60 or something of saying an insane different prompts and little pieces of paper and you pick it out and it just says like call a friend, open a door for a stranger, give someone a compliment, like, and um, it was just so fun to see though. It was something super simple, um, didn't cost anything, just we had an old jar and pieces yeah. of paper, um, but it was a lot of kindness spread through that. Donation drives. I like that. Very yeah. Good. Very good. Yarn swap. Great. <laughs> I love that. Those joyous moments. There's a lot of joy in this, in these lists. This is so great. Michael, should we move on to I think, sto yeah, power just, just, stories? Yeah, we're reading. I, you're, we're reading each other's minds. We're just very okay. in sync. It's like we've done this. Yeah. <laughs> so for this one, again, think about all the different ways we might use stories to instill joy. And to me, this is huge. There are so many things we could do with sharing stories, creating stories, keeping stories. One of the things that I've always wanted to do at the library <laughs> that I did as a kid, but fifth grade, no, sixth grade, Mrs. Dravakovich's class. <laughs> and yeah. we worked with our class, worked with a local, um, um, you know, uh, senior community. And we each like, um, it was almost like a human library where we got paired up mm -hmm. with individuals in the community and we got to hear their stories and then write mm -hmm. write books about them and actually build the books and illustrate them and then give them um to the individuals and had a strawberry shortcake little festival and <laughs> <laughs> yeah but sitting down with my partner and hearing his story and being able to document it was it like stayed with me my whole life <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, a pre a uh, multicultural fair. I love that for storytelling, yes. getting to know our communities. I have a week in my class called the power of stories. And one, I just read everybody's blog post for that, that module. 
And one student reminded me of the, the boy that wrote a book and snuck it into his public library and put it on the shelf. And the librarians found it and they cataloged it, put it on the shelf. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> I love and it. And that, that could be a program and somebody can add that if they want to make a book and we'll put it into the library's collection. That, that would be incredible. So great. And then again, you have that feeling of belonging. My work, my book I made is in the library. That sense of ownership for our community over the library is so important to library sustaining too. I mean, that's part of it. Us being able oh, to yeah. like support people's success, but then also making sure you know, they stick around. <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh, community poetry, love that. Sharing personal immigrant stories. We had a couple mm. get engaged in our library. Oh, I love it. Young authors reading, love it. Panel of local chefs, anything with food, right? Absolutely. Um, one of my other favorite programs that our, um, actually she's now our Anything Nature Library Manager um, in preparation for that project. Um, but when she was a guide at Wright Farms, she did a, a program called Breaking Bread where she called it, she described it as cultural speed dating where <laughs> um, she had people from different um, cultural backgrounds bake bread. Um, and we sat with the group <gasps> and heard about the bread, heard about their family stories, how it was passed down. And then you would switch to the other table and try the bread there and hear the stories and, oh. and really emphasize the connections that we have over food and something like bread. And, and everybody had bread memories. It didn't matter where they were from or what their background. And so it was this great way of incorporating food and storytelling and community connection and cultural understanding. It was so awesome. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. Oh my gosh, I'm yapping and there's still like all these ideas coming in. <laughs> Open uh, mics and local author fests. The power of picture books for all ages. Oh my gosh. Oh, the children's literature for adults is incredible. Some of the, the stories and the artwork, amazing. Oh, oh, do you have a toy? Okay. <laughs> to sharing stories of local leaders, their connections to books and reading and stories and have them share read aloud. Love that. Creating family history and gene genealogies. Love that. Oh my gosh, the library was the woman's favorite place as a child. I'm obsessed with this engagement. And he did a scavenger hunt that led her here. He did hit his proposal in a book and she had to use the ISBN to find it. <laughs> <laughs> he was really making her work for it. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Playwriting workshops, improv at the library. Um, preserving family photos. So mm -hmm. great. Those, Absolutely. those memories shared. Yeah. So awesome. These are, there are so many great ideas, hundreds of ideas here, right? Just us together in this document. Um, and so cool. so cool. And this will be available. We'll keep this open. Um, so if you all want to um, bookmark this, um, and uh um you know continue to add too i i would encourage you to yeah. do that i won't lock it up absolutely yeah <laughs> um yeah it's so great um are do you think are we ready to move on to q and a i i think we are i think this yeah and this can keep can keep going as long as folks want to be inputting hi yeah. All um, right. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> um, Hi, Simon. <laughs> I, I just had a couple, and feel free, everyone, to continue to put your questions that you have into the chat or into the Q and A, either or. 
So for Stacy, the first one is, have you maintained the call-in line that you were we talking We have about? not. No. We have not maintained the call-in line because people stopped calling. Okay, all right. So the, <laughs> the need was met and you shut it, you kind of sundowned it after the, yes. the need yep. was met. Okay. Yep, yeah. And then we had another here, I'm gonna one. Go back to, I'm going to go to here. Here we Very are. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are you using to build and host the Anything World metaverse? Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I can't even tell you how excited. We're actually really, we're getting the keys this week. Um, we're moving in. Um, so the world was built in, um, in Unreal Engine and is going to be hosted on Odyssey um which um it's so beautiful <laughs> um we're really excited about the platform um and so um so yeah that's it's going to be hosted on odyssey if, for those metaverse folks out there all right and i had a, a question myself yeah what are what are some sort of from both of you smaller ways because we've had a lot of like big ideas and programs and I'm wondering what are some smaller ways just in the day to day I know you talked about training your staff for in kindness and sort of a concierge experience. Um, so what do you just have like a couple of small ways that you integrate joy and kindness into your daily practice does that make sense. Totally. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll kick things off if that's okay, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of the things that I often talk about, because like, you know, we're sharing, um, is really smiling. <laughs> I, I think just a smile sometimes is, I, you know, I know that seems really simple, but, um, you know, sometimes our staff are the only folks, I mean, may offer the only smile that somebody gets in one day. Um, and so, I mean, I think that's like the simplest act of providing a spark of joy, um, you know, sometimes. And, and, you know, one of the things that um, we talk about at Anythink is, you know, we, um, we hire happy people. And, and, and that doesn't mean that, that life is just like rainbows and unicorns all the time. We know that. Um, but you know one of the things that we when we are hiring at anything we actually ask a question what makes you happy and it's not necessarily the how what they answer but how um that um i think is really telling about um doing like people-centered work um another small way that we um kind of provide those joyous moments is through what we call experience zones at anything so we create these um interactive self-guided displays that are designed to really kind of bring information to life um and they're small things they're they're small displays sometimes they can be um you know something as simple as like we had one up that was about color and mindfulness. I loved this one. And it was basically just had some instruction of pick a color and walk around the library or throughout your day, observing where you see that color. And it was really just about observation and mindfulness and, and just taking moments to do that. And so we had a display in the library related to that. Um, we have one right now about fast fashion as part of Earth Week and, and giving some resources and information about fast fashion. And, and again, it's they're meant to be these self-guided, interactive, sometimes simple and sometimes more complex um, ways for that we engage our community and um, really bring information to life in our library. So that's one way um, kind of we do it. Anyway. Excellent. And, and Michael, before you go, we did have a couple more uh, oh, come in. Okay. So I wanted to prioritize uh, yeah. these. And these are for more metaverse. There are people that are really interested in the metaverse, Stacey. Uh, yes. Is someone <laughs> going to curate the metaverse full time? Yes. So I will say, so um, 
we haven't actually announced it publicly yet and um you guys are getting <laughs> sneak peek info you guys are getting sneak peek info but it's such an important project to us and i think um it was important to share with you all and one of the biggest things that we're working on i'm working on personally right now um but our um and so some of the some of these details we are going to be learning this is the first time really we've done anything like this and it's really one of the first times anything like quite like this has been done although you know there are libraries out there and some you know there were a lot of second life libraries i know and sims libraries but um we are planning on having it moderated full time um some of that is going to be um there's going to be we'll we will be looking to hire um a manager of the space and then um we are going to be looking for third party moderators that could be on there um during times the library is closed excellent and another metaverse question what are the first things you plan to plan on doing in the metaverse oh my god okay so well <laughs> i'm super excited i don't know if we're gonna get to this in time um well, so let me back up. Um, so we're just to give you a little, here's the behind the scenes. Um, it's actually getting uploaded from Unreal to Odyssey this week. Um, we are going to be doing things like hosting tours for stakeholders and staff um, over the next few months. Um, you know, my one of the first events that we were shooting for, I don't know if we're gonna make this happen in time, but we host a backyard concert series um, at the library. Um, this We're going into our 11th year um, in the summertime. And my dream was to live stream um, the concert series um, in August um, and to do and, and show it in the metaverse, in, in the anything world. So. Um, it would probably be, this one's probably going to not be open to the public, but it might be invitation only because I don't think we're going to be quite ready for like prime time. Um, but that's one of the things. So there's an amphitheater in the world. You would be able to actually watch a live stream of what's happening in, in, in real life, um, but participate and watch as an avatar with, and engaging with other people um online so it's a really dynamic way instead of just a regular live stream to participate in anything events the other thing too that i'll share is we're also building um like a scavenger hunt um it's nice. a nature scavenger hunt where there are 30 different bugs plants um and animals in the world that the idea is that and they're all from like actually like colorado um based you know um and plants and animals and so you'll be able to do a scavenger hunt in world to identify all of these and then the idea is that you could then bring that you could cross them all off the list bring them into the actual library um and and get something from us you know whether that's like a um a, like an a, a plant identification kit that you could then go out into the real world and then do the exploration. I'm really excited and passionate about this intersection of the things that we can offer online and how we can connect that with nature and how we can also connect that with things that are going on in the library. That's great. Um, we had I'm also very passionate about it. <laughs> you can tell a little bit. We had a quick follow up about your uh, like passive program, your displays. Do you have someone in house who creates the self guided displays, or do you hire someone? Is that an outside organization? Yeah. So um, our so we uh, we have um, our frontline staff. Um, we have wranglers. Um, those are our materials handlers um, at the library at anything um, concierges which would be the equivalent of our library, assist, uh, library assistants who are really the backbone of our organization. They do a lot of the greeting, um, the help with library cards. They're the welcoming folks who, when you come in the door um, and our guides who are um, do a lot of the programming um, and more of the reference. Um, and our concierges really do a lot of the experience zones. And, and a lot of times it's in collaboration with a guide. So, I always think that they're most successful when they're, it's sort of like a holistic experience. So the experience zone is tied to a program that's coming up that is tied to a display that's close by. So like the whole right. thing is really super holistic. So a lot of times it's our 
concierges who are creating those and sometimes in collaboration with a guide. Um, and then my team, um, the innovations team, you know, for something that might be a little bit more larger scale, closer to like a museum quality kind of experience, um, we, we help with those. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. Michael, we have a nice one for you. Uh, Michael, how should we help move along reluctant staff to joining these directions of joy and learning, experiencing, and storytelling? Many of us are on the brink of burnout and need other staff to come along and lighten the load. It's a great question. Yeah, Isn't absolutely. It? And I've actually, I wrote a piece on burnout, I think for public libraries, and I can, uh, I'll get a, you can get a URL and, or yeah, I'll share that if I can here before we wind up. Um, Burnout is a thing, and I've actually done a couple of uh, sessions uh, this past year uh, about how compassion fatigue, which is a, a phrase that I never heard until uh, ALA 2018, how that has really impacted uh, uh, our, our staffing, li our librarians, etc. So a few things. Um, I would suggest doing an exercise similar to this one uh, inside the library and, and listen to what your staff has to say about joy. And then I also uh, just happen to have on my clipboard um, the formula for success. I wrote a column in LJ that is in uh, one of my books called Formula for Success, Essential Skills Plus Mindset Squared Multiplied by Support Equals Success. So this, this is something you can do with your staff, and I've done this at staff days, build a library staffer with all of these pieces, essential skills, what mindset is needed. Uh, and that's probably one of the most important things. What support is needed? And one of the things you're doing is you're showing your staff that you support them and that you're there and you have their back. A lot of these things, a lot of the things that encourage people to smile, and to waive those fines if we if you still have fines or whatever it might be, or breaking that little tiny policy that won't be that awful if it is, is knowing, is staff knowing that they are supported by the folks that run the show. And this uh, it's the, in the space between essential skills and mindset, I think are soft skills. And soft skills to me are hard skills. I'm wearing my shirt. This is not a commercial. I'm not doing a commercial, but I absolutely, oh, my smart monitor here. I love this <laughs> shirt. This is from, um, hello, is it Kind Cotton? Every time you buy one of these shirts, they send a book to a kid. I love it. So it's all of these things, the empathy, compassion, inclusion, justice, and kindness, of course. So those are the things that we want to cultivate. And as Stacy said, you want to hire for that if you can. Like, look for those, because you can teach people how libraries work, but you want that mindset and those soft skills or <laughs> help them discover the soft cells that they have, soft skills. So to bring along the folks that might be maybe just moving a little slower toward what libraries look like in 2023, uh, it might just be giving them uh, the support and encouragement to, to kind of be in the space where they do things that they really enjoy. You may have a staffer that seems like they're burnt out and they're just blah, but you might come to them and say, hey, help me help me plan a culinary literacy program. Maybe they're into cooking and they watch all the YouTube cooking folks or something. And that's like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So find that way uh, to get, um, get into where somebody may find uh, that they can express themselves because I think that will help them um, move along. That's an excellent question too. I did uh, uh, the Library Land Loves podcast with Michelle Arbuckle, who's up in Canada, and we talked about burnout in that as well. And I'm gonna grab a version of that article and share it with you. Thank you for that question. Excellent, thanks, Michael. Um, we don't have any more in the Q&A. If there's any last minute questions or anything anyone else wants to ask from the group, throw it in the Q&A right now. Um, otherwise, if you, had any, if, if you have any parting words before we, we to wrap it up, we'll make the, uh, 
the recording will be available on the Lacona YouTube page. Uh, Michael and Stacy are going to make the slides available. We'll send that out to registrants. And I here one more time is the Google Doc uh, link if people need that um, with all those great ideas on it. Uh, and thanks so much for this great presentation. Really appreciate it. And you can go to lacunae.net for other programs for, from all our other sections. We have a bunch of different great programs coming up. Thank you all so much for being yes, present, for participating and coming along for the ride. Um, I, I think that I always am um, so inspired by, by um, this community um, when we do these. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks to our buddy Simon too. Yeah. For all your help. <laughs> oh, and Marla and uh, Courtney as well. And Marla and Courtney. <laughs> Absolutely. <Sorry. laughs> oh, wait. It's a team effort. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, the you will be able to access this program recorded. Yeah, I, uh, uh, it'll be on the Lacona YouTube page. And if you visit lacona.net, you can link out in a, in a couple days, maybe a week, it'll be up there uh, to view. All right. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, Thank have a you. good day, everybody.